Hickok 45 with a Charter Arms Bulldog. Let's see how much bite it has. <laughs> nice. Click. <laughs> ah, some pretty good bite, at least five times. Yes, it's a five shot 44 special from Charter. And uh, I have a history with uh, these old bulldogs and have been meaning to, to get one for a long time. And uh, many of you have requested it. And I have uh, probably even answered you that yes, I have had one of those, but not now. This is a new one. It's uh, you know brand new and it's uh, the modern uh, Bulldog 44 Special. They started making these things in about 73 and they were blue then. I don't think they made any stainless ones at that time. And that's the kind I had back in the uh, 80s, 90s. Pretty cool, pretty cool. It's always been a kind of a, an interesting firearm. Anybody that's ever had one, you, you know what I mean. It's a small gun, but it's a big bore. And it, it's not even all that heavy. But they say 21 ounces, but I weigh it at 19 and a half ounces. So it's around 20 ounces of uh, big bore. Yeah, big bore bulldog. So pretty cool, except it's five shots. Let's shoot some jacket. These are all my hand loads here. 44 Special is a little harder to come by uh, in factory ammo. You can find it. But uh, let's put some uh, jacketed rounds in just for kicks. There's not a lot of <laughs> kicks. It does kick a little bit. doesn't hurt you, though. doesn't really hurt you. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Uh, we might as well go for the gong early on. <laughs> Cock it and, and see... Uh, we can lob one in on it. Now it's got a two and a half inch barrel. We're not talking a lot of velocity. Yeah, there we go. Could maybe uh, fix a cup of coffee while we're waiting for the bullet to arrive at its destination. <laughs> Excuse me, which is kind of neat though. All right, let's see, where does it hit? I bet it hits wherever the barrel's pointed. Oh, let's cock one and see if we can hit that two liter right there. All right. I think the sights are pretty much on. Not too bad. Click. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, the downside. It's just five shots. But they're big shots, right? <laughs> big shots from the Bulldog. 44 Special. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I had one of these uh, blue, uh, you know, in the blue steel, blue finish, blue steel, just in regular carbon steel with the blue finish back in uh, the 80s and 90s. And it, it was a, kind of a glove box gun for me. I had a little incident downtown one night uh, coming back out of a restaurant, nice restaurant, and a carload of folks didn't like me being there. And that was, gosh, that was in, uh, I don't know, when was that? Well, it was around 80, you know, 80, early 80s. And uh, and at that point, I, it hit me. I said, you know what? This is weird. I'm a gun guy, even though this is before carry permits and all that. Here I am without a gun and, and kind of a threat situation. I was fine and nothing, you know, advanced too far with it. I was in the car and all that. But uh, I thought, you know what? I'm going to find me an inexpensive firearm to keep in my glove box locked up just so I have it. And I did, and I, I was sort of on the borderline edge there uh, legally. I know I used to talk with uh, Metro cops about it and everything. So yeah, let's keep it locked and it's not, uh, you know, what everything. So anyway, I'm going to all that. But this was the gun that I did. It was, was my truck gun. This was my car gun for a long time before carry permits. And I just liked it because it was, it was about 200 bucks then. They run around 400 now. But uh, yeah, for 200 bucks, uh, my life is worth that. Some might disagree. It might just be worth $49.95 to some folks. But it, uh, it was worth a couple hundred bucks to, to keep in the car. If it got stolen, uh, it got stolen. But it had to go through several locks and all that sort of thing. So I have a little history, and I've always liked it. I, why I traded it, I don't know. Why do we trade anything? I had three or four different pythons through the years. Why don't I have any now? I, well, lots of reasons, but I trade them. Uh, so I've always uh, liked it. Not sure why I traded it, like I said. But there's just something cool about a small firearm that shoots a big round and is shootable. Now, if it's not shootable, that's another story, but it's pretty shootable. You know, for its intended purpose, it is just fine. 
the, really the only limitation in this firearm, the only significant substantial limitation, big negative, is the capacity. I mean, how can you argue with a 44 Special? It's about the same ballistics as a 45 you know, ACP. So nobody argues with the ballistics on that. Uh, but you could argue with five shots, okay? So you would like more shots maybe. But uh, I'll tell you what, five shots beats no shots, right? Pretty cool. Uh, let's go back to the uh, jack or full metal, well, not full metal jacket, the uh, semi wad cutters. I load the same bullets in this that I do in 44 Magnum for the most part, just 240 grain standard bullets, cast bullets generally. And just a shorter case, less powder. You don't want to try to make a 44 Magnum out of a 44 Special, okay? That's, if you want 44 Magnum, if you want whatever, 1200 feet per second, get a 44 Magnum, not a 44 Special. Oh, a pot. See if it'll smoke a pot. <laughs> that did pretty well. Let's try it on this target. Maybe I can tell where to hold if I uh, put a couple on that. Since they're 44s, we might be able to see them. I will hold pretty much in the, try to hold in the orange. Like a little low. Okay, I think it, uh, pretty much right on. Doesn't mean I'm right on, but it's pretty much right on where you're holding the sights. That's always good. So, good. All right, 44. Uh, and we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the, these guns gained some fame, notoriety, uh, back in the, uh, the 70s. Uh, the infamous killer, uh, mass murderer, really, in New York City, uh, Son of Sam. I uh, used one of these, killed, what, seven or eight people, wounded seven or eight people. It was, uh, it was very uh, dramatic, and it was uh, big in the news around the country, the world. I guess this is, goes back to a time before there was a, a new crisis of some sort every day, right? You know? But that was a big deal. These people, uh, he was sneaking up on people. Uh, they'd be parked in a car, and he would just assassinate them. And he did that with, again, with seven or eight people, wounded seven or eight more. And it's really bad. Finally got him, and uh, of course, once they talked to him, they realized why he was doing it. And I think everybody understood then, because he claimed that uh, I think it was the demons had kind of taken over the neighbor's dog, and the and the dog was commanding him to to kill these people. I mean, that that's really that was the story, and that was his his story. So then we all understood why he was doing it, right? So I think they slapped him on the wrist to let him go. No, actually, he did a lot of time in prison, and I guess he's still there, or he died. I've forgotten. But anyway, uh, David Berkowitz, he, I shouldn't even use his name and give me publicity. But uh, the 44 Special, when that, when all that was going on and the, and the Bulldog, it, uh, it did gain a lot of notoriety. And it already was a popular firearm because it was a neat little backup gun for uh, police uh, because it's light. It's not that heavy at all. And big bore. Uh, Charter Arms, I think, in the what was it the '60s when they started the company, a guy named Douglas McClenhan, I think, uh, started, and he had been with Colt, Ruger, High Standard, other companies, and he made a little 38 Special that was a little bit smaller than this, and uh, you know it was, it was inexpensive, and it became really popular among you know, police officers as a backup gun, and, and this was too. So, uh, Charter Arms has gone in and out of business over the years. Uh, they're here today, gone tomorrow, but. They come back, and the positive side of that is they always come back stronger. And if you go into a gun shop now, there's it's a big, well-stocked gun shop. There will be a whole counter full of Charter Arms you know, revolvers probably, all barrel lengths and sizes and calibers. So they're really doing well now, they uh, seem to be. And uh, lots of offerings, uh, lots of finishes. You see them in colors. I think they have pink and purple guns, and you know they, they just have lots of different models. So. And, and they're not expensive. Now, they're not a Smith & Wesson uh, like this. They're not a, a Colt. And now this is a little bitty Smith & Wesson, so you don't get the feel that you have with like a Model 19 or a, a 629 or something. But uh, they're not quite as solid. They don't have the, exactly the same feel. Part of it's they're just different. Uh, but they do feel well made. Uh, they, you know, they have a, you know, a uh, hammer block and everything. They're safe to load five in, fill them up. and. And they do pretty well. There's probably not a firearm you want to go shoot 10,000 rounds through and expect it to be solid when you finish. I don't know. Maybe it would. It's a solid frame. I know they tout that, whereas a Smith has a side plate on it, so it's not totally solid. But the, the Charter Arms is just one piece, the frame. And it's uh, stainless. 
Uh, even I think they're blued guns or black guns, whatever you call them, are stainless, but they're just colored uh, like they can do now, you know, with stainless steel. It's hard to know when you got stainless steel. Except for the trigger guard and the uh, uh, the grip frame, it's a it's a high grade aluminum, so to make the gun lighter, you know, places where you don't need you know the steel, the heavy steel, the weight. So so that's why it's 19 half ounces. At least mine is. I guess everybody else's is 21 ounces. Maybe someone shaved something off the barrel or or the hammer and made mine lighter. <laughs> but uh, so they're pretty interesting guns. You know, a lot of history. And as I said, one of the coolest things about it is the fact that it's it's 44. That's the big attraction. Now a lot of people probably they sell a lot more charter arms than 38. You know, and I 32 and 22, whatever calibers. There's a lot of different models they have. But uh, there's just something special about the the 44. Various people have made these things. Smith came out with a uh, Smith and Wesson with a 44 special several years back. Was it the model? I forgot the model number, uh, but uh, they discontinued it. Uh, 44 Special is not a round for one, a, a cartridge, a round <laughs> for one thing that you can just go pick up anywhere or buy in bulk. You know, I mean, you find it, but it's it's usually pretty expensive. I hand load for it, and uh, Federal's, I think they've not been able to get us any 44 Special yet, which is not a big deal. We don't shoot that much 44 Special. But, uh, you know, it's just not as common as 38 Special, and so that, that turns some people off as far as, you know, going out and shooting a lot of it. But they're just cool little guns. Uh, the grip, mine, my first one had a walnut grip on it, and it wasn't quite this big, uh, which I actually preferred. But uh, this one feels good. It's a little bit bigger, but it feels, feels fine. Okay, let's see if we can hit anything else here. Let's try a pink 2-liter because who would be caught dead drinking a pink cool liter or two liter? Oh, well, thank you. Provide a little fountain there for us. Uh, let's try that green one up there. Trigger's not too bad. It's, it's right on, I'll have to say. Sorry, Mr. Cowboy. Got to die. <laughs> Click. Hits where you aim. Hits where you aim, and you can never argue with that. Okay. Uh, I, and I'm not really shot it that much, except I shot the other one a fair amount that I had, and I shot enough to make sure it worked, and uh, kind of got an idea where to hold. But it's uh, it's just got a it's got a nice double action trigger too. Uh, Y'all can't tell because your finger's not on the trigger like mine, but it's it's not bad. We're talking a, a low end. I know four hundred dollars is not uh, you know chump change to our, to most people, right? <laughs> but still, a Smith like this, you know, is going to be what six, seven, eight hundred dollars. So we're talking uh, a lot less. So it's not a Smith and Wesson, but it is. It's pretty nice. It, it feels pretty good, both double action and single action. I have to say. So. This this firearm is a uh, who's it appeal to? Not to maybe uh, even most of you as far as owning it, but for people who really like revolvers, uh, yeah, you know, like this, any any good old revolver, a carry revolver, uh, it it has to have some appeal. Even if you're a Smith person, and I've always been a Smith and Wesson or a Colt person. Believe it or not, they used to make revolvers, Colt did. I, and I've always been partial to those, a little bit of an elitist, I guess. You pick up a, a Charter Arms, I can remember even back in the 70s and 80s, and you think, oh, I like what that gun is, but I don't know, it's just not a Smith, it just doesn't, feels cheap, and that kind of thing. And so you end up not buying it, maybe. Uh, so that turns some people off, but uh, they make some models that the other companies don't, and now they have up their quality. From from all I've read, the, the new Charter Arms, uh, it, there's nothing really ch cheap, quote unquote, about them. Uh, they're again, they're less expensive, you know, than the Smiths, but they're not junk. They're not junk. They're pretty well made and they hold up well by all uh, standards and everything I have read. Okay, I've not owned a lot of. Uh, I guess this is my second one, and uh, <laughs> you know me, I like big bore, and so both of the Charter Arms I've owned were Bulldogs, 44. So, you know, you can't hate a revolver that you can just pick up and do that with, even though you just have five shots. 
and uh, because in most cases what's going to happen is this when the uh, balloon goes up or the elephant shows its face it's going to be quick and very close something I don't do enough of really but but we all know that I think that uh, if you ever had to use a firearm in a defensive situation, here I am, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretend I'm Clint Smith or somebody here. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. It would be up close and dirty. And it, you're not even gonna be shooting at 20 yards and all that kind of uh, silly stuff like we do a lot of. It's just gonna be a situation where, you know, someone's about to kill you or do you great bodily harm and you just have to pull. <laughs> And, and defend yourself. Now, I think I skipped a, uh, I got, I got all nervous because I was about to be killed there and I skipped the chamber. <laughs> I did, what I did was, uh, I'm pretty sure, let's see if we can duplicate it. I, I didn't release the trigger enough and that'd be something that you'd wanna, if you're gonna carry a gun, any gun, uh, make sure that you know how it operates and that you have practiced what I was just trying to do there for the first time, that you release that trigger all the way. I got back there and I didn't, I didn't release it all the way and I think it got off, off kilter there, okay? So, you gotta be aware of that. That's why you train, right? And carry the gun that you have shot a great deal, okay? Now, I'll tell you one reason I got away from the Bulldog. I liked it, it worked fine. I probably just needed the cash to buy some other gun. I don't recall what it was. But, you know, I refer to my little Glock 27 as my Bulldog a lot of time. And that's what it comes down to. If you like semi-automatics, okay. It, I didn't have my, I don't have my 27 out here. Or, you know, 26, either one. But if you, if you lay the Glock 27 beside that, and I remember doing that. The Glock 26, one of them. This gun is actually, I think, bigger, longer than a Glock 27. I mean, you basically got a bigger gun, you got a thicker gun. And I mean, people would argue a 40 caliber versus a 44 special, but probably not much difference in ballistics. Uh, many would argue 44 with a good bullet would be better, but they'd be roughly in the same ballpark. And there you go, you got a gun that, uh, I forget what the 27 weighs, but, but it'd, be, it'd be in the ballpark, you know, and it's probably a little smaller in a lot of ways. And you have 10 rounds you have twice the capacity in a gun that's just as reliable, you know, and, and one actually that you're probably not going to short <laughs> stroke the trigger with, you know, so, so that's the kind of thing that, that leads me away from guns like this for carry, even though I like them, you know, and uh, leads you to trade. So just a little aside there, I won't charge any extra for that little comparison with the Glock 27 that I don't have with me. Okay. These are just cool. You know, and again, if you're, if you're like me, even though I'm not probably going to carry it, although again, there's always a place, uh, depending on what state you live in, what country you live in, uh, maybe for a truck gun or carry gun. So maybe you do want something that's not too awfully expensive to uh, have somewhere. You know, so there could be a purpose. But I'm, I'm attracted to, to little guns like this that are potential carry guns, even though even though it's maybe fourth or fifth down the list for something I would carry. I just I don't know. It's just attractive to me, and uh, if it'll shoot and it's fun to shoot, why not? Why not? Let's go across there just a little bit. I'm, I'm not going to worry whether I can hit anything or not, but uh, I'm going to shoot at a pig on that top row because <sighs> I'm not sure I've missed enough. I need to miss. I need some bad misses here because it is a two and a half inch barrel. I should be able to uh, miss some targets by about a mile. Yeah, I didn't miss him far enough. That was too close. Yeah, it's too close too. I need to miss better than that. I don't know where that one went. I'm gonna shoot the second pig. That first one doesn't fall sometimes even when you do hit it. I do want him to fall if I manage to get some lead on him. Didn't mean to shoot. It's got a nice trigger. That one got off too quick. Okay, I was in the ballpark. <laughs> I was in the ballpark in my truck, a couple more. Uh, what else did I not tell you about it? Uh, I was gonna show you that it's about a quarter inch thicker than the J-frame, okay? About a quarter inch thicker. 
and uh, just for your information uh, this gun I, I weighed them it's uh, about two three ounces uh, less and uh, yeah you still got five shots so you got a bigger gun but you got 44 and that's the attraction that's the attraction to it I'll shoot five more before we go Let's see what else was I gonna mention there's bound to be another lie about it that I forgot to tell you. Well, it's getting dirty, and you can always tell when I've got my hand loads out. It's even worse. Well, I know one thing I read that I wasn't aware of. It kind of slipped my mind. Was that the uh, the SP-101 Rigger? You might be familiar with that. Neat little five-shot 357 Magnum. Uh, very popular little gun. It is uh, in the neighborhood of 25, 26, 27 ounces. So it weighs six or seven ounces more than this gun, and you get five shots with it. So that is one of the attractions of this thing, as far as negatives and positives. It's light for caliber, and uh, you know it's not expensive you know, as far as positives. So negatives, it is uh, it is a Charter Arms, and uh, it's not a Smith and Wesson or a Colt, but a uh, pretty good little gun. Let's just take a couple of shots here. I'm going to shoot that can if I can. Can if I can. Yeah, and that two liter if I can. Pretty cool. Let's put another one on that target. And let's make sure the cowboy respects us. <laughs> yeah, what a nice ring. So that's five. And uh, so the little Charter Arms Bulldog, it's, it's pretty neat to have it back at the compound. It, it really is. And uh, even though it's a little different than the one I had, it doesn't have quite the personality because of its stainless and some of the upgrades and uh, the shrouded uh, ejector rod and everything. It's a little bit different, but it's really cool. Uh, appreciate Bud's, uh, you know, giving us this. Uh, yeah, it's just the kind of gun everybody ought to own, don't you think? <laughs> you know, I'm just kidding. But if you like revolvers, uh, get out of the elitist mode now, like I'm always in, and uh, at least uh, look at some of these things because there's just something extremely cool about a 19 and a half ounce. Uh, 44 special uh, this size. Pretty neat. Life is good.